Hello, welcome to today's video. My name is Maggie, I'm a graphic novel artist and I like documenting things. Sometimes they're cool, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're weird, sometimes they're boring, but I document them anyway to put them... Hello, we have a special guest on the show. What would you like to say? Interesting. Okay, I think we're gonna have a close up of Clementine in a split second. No, she's just sat on you, which I think means we're friends. She's been doing that to us a lot lately, so I'm deciding to take it as a positive sign of kinship and potentially confirmation that we're in the same pack now. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm super glad that you're here. Okay, my camera just cut me off for not having enough space. Today's video is gonna follow the exact same template that the last one did because people seem to really enjoy it. I'm gonna talk at you for about two minutes minutes to start with, introduce what we're about to do. Then we're gonna go into a giant hangout session is what I like to call it. And then right at the end of the video, I'm gonna go through all of the questions that I got in the comment section of the last video. So without further ado, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you don't, I sincerely apologize. That wasn't my intention. I will see you on the other end and goodbye.
Look at this. A tree on top of the building. <laughs> That's a, that's a great 
it's okay. The photos weren't meant to be. So I can get a fix before that. <laughs> I look back at
<laughs> what?
this still recording? I hope so. Hello, it's me again on the other side of this video. I'm just hunting down the comments that I got last time before I do anything though. Thank you so much for staying to the end of this video, if you did. That's incredible that you would wanna watch somebody like me talk and do stuff on the internet. The first question today is from Stell135. What is the app that you are writing your comic manuscripts in? So back in the day when I used to be a young, poor, lowly film student. We used to use a software called Final Draft because films and graphic novels, kind of comic books, tend to have the same kind of layout, the same format, which is action, dialogue, 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 action, dialogue, dialogue, so on, so on, so on. However, that has become expensive <clears throat> in recent times. So currently the initial software that I use to type the manuscript up is called Arc Studio. They have a free basic account where I think you can have one manuscript going at a time, which is fine for me. I'm only writing one book at a time, so. And then myself and my editors and art directors pass this on a word file so that we can add comments and respond and have dialogues in the sidelines and stuff like that. So yes, I start off in Arc Studio and then that organically moves over to Microsoft Word when the editing process starts. In the video you mentioned you showed that you were doing color corrections on another author's graphic novel. And I was wondering what that was like. Does the publisher tell you what to fix? or do you get free reign? So in the industry that is illustration, sometimes a project comes along where a publisher just needs a colorist. That could be because the author doesn't have time to color all of the final artwork in, or the publisher wants to go for a slightly different vibe and the author perhaps only does traditional color and that will take a very long time for a graphic novel. I love colorist work. I think coloring is probably one of my favorite parts of the process of illustration in general. And so I love the experience of color. It also gives you a little bit of, I guess, freedom in terms of you don't have to be the brain behind the operation. You just need to be the pair of hands that finish everything off. So it takes a little bit of the edge and responsibility off of the entire book, I guess, being successful. I got to work with an incredible author illustrator called Gus Gordon for this project, who was fantastic to work with. At the beginning of the process, we set out a color Bible with maybe five to 10 different spreads, which I would then walk away with, color in the rest of the book according to what we've agreed upon the colors would look like. And then I come back with a full novel and hand it over. The author would walk away to consider it, the art director goes away to consider it, and then everybody comes back with feedback and notes on this color needs to be a little bit brighter. This color needs to be a little bit browner. Can we swap this shadow for that shadow? Can the shadows be warmer? Can there be a glow coming out of the sun? Uh, so there's a lot of structure to the process, but it works. It I find it to be a very relaxing process. Personally, I find sketching to be the most stressful part and then inking and coloring are sort of the big brain work is done and now you can do the stuff that's enjoyable and play an audiobook and just enjoy your day. And lastly, if you could comment on what the process of working on someone else's work is like, that would be interesting. Yeah, I love it. I think it's really fun. I think it takes a lot of the pressure off because you, you get to just kind of be a kid for an entire paid professional project. You just get to color in and it's made even easier when you love line work that's gone into it, which in the case of Into the Bee Wilderness, I love the inks so much. Like that book was going to be beautiful whether I was involved or not. The author that I was working with had an incredibly beautiful style that I completely completely clicked with 100%. Does the publisher come to you or did you find these types of color jobs yourself? These jobs come to me through my agent. I'm currently represented by the Bright Agency. My agent is called Alex and she finds all of these jobs for me, which I guess is what an agency does. Um, an important thing to note about agencies is that the agency that represents me now has rejected me before. I submitted to them, they rejected me and I think 2021 and then in 2022 they reached out to offer representation to me. So don't be discouraged if an agency says no one or two or three or four times because you never know what's around the corner. The next question comes from Presentia3880. I think they were referencing the big tablet that I draw on for Photoshop, the one that I'd won in a competition online. I'd never won anything in my life before that point. I think it's important to say that. That tablet is made by XP Pen. I think it was some sort of limited edition collaboration called Line Friends. This specific model, I think, is called the Deco 01 V2 Line Friends Edition. And they have a couple more options with the same characters in like really funky, cool ways. <laughs> Dreamin Gemini says, what kind of notes do you take in the novels that you read? I would like to sincerely underline the fact that I 
put no smart things in these books. I'm not writing essays, okay? I'm not one of those really smart bookstagram people that like can create a thesis out of a book. That ain't me. Most of the things that I write are oh my god that's so hot or oh she did it again i just underline really obvious things and really random observations that come to me in the moment that i think in a reread of the book would potentially be funny that is what goes into those books it's slightly embarrassing how stupid my thoughts are i think that was all the questions from last week's video i hope i managed to answer them all if you have any questions on the back of this video let me know in the comments below and i will address them in the video in two weeks time until then oh do you want to see the bangs this is the fringe that we cut together i don't know how i feel about it yet i feel like like i look like a medieval boy i'm growing out of a pixie at the minute let me just put this back on. I want to cut my hair myself, but I also can't see the back of my head. And I also don't have enough mirrors to arrange to see the back of my head. So we're kind of flying with it. We're kind of seeing where this goes. Also, before I go, super last story, because I thought it was really funny. You know how we established this camera was broken in this video and the shutter was stuck, basically. Well, we got home, very tired, eating donuts. And I left this on the coffee table with a strap hanging down. Literally 10 minutes later, I hear the biggest cruffuffle, just a bang and a clash and something gets heavily like dragged from the living room into the hallway by the front door. And I'm like, what in the heck was that? Cause I know something's broken. I know something's broken somewhere. I could hear it. I go to check on what's going on. Clem in her playful state of being a devil child had tangled herself in the strap of this, dragged it off of the coffee table and then basically banged it around a bunch of furniture all the way to the front door. First things first, Clem was fine absolutely straight back to playing games, gave her some treats, she inhaled them, flipped off. So she was absolutely 100% fine. And then because of the amount of banging and clattering that I'd heard, I was like, I better check on this camera because if it was one thing that was broken before, it's multiples now. So I take the lens off, I look at the sensor, I look at all the bits and everything seems to be going okay. And then I take a look at the back and the shutter is in the correct position. And wouldn't you guess it? Do you hear that? Let me do it again. So my cat fixed my camera for free at home. That really was the last bit of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again soon. And yeah, I hope you have an amazing week, an amazing day, and you're staying safe and having fun. Until next time, goodbye.